Hi guys, here we are going to learn how to solve a system of linear congruence of the type x is congruent to a mod m, x is congruent to b mod n, where m and n, b moduli, are not necessarily pairwise relatively prime. What we mean by this is, given a system a1x is congruent to b1 mod m1, a2x is congruent to b2 mod m2, a3 is congruent to a3x is congruent to b3 mod m3. Well, there can be any number of congruences. Let's say we have these three congruences. So, in this system, if the GCD of m1, m2, when we take them in pair, that is not 1. If the GCD of M2, M3 is not 1 and GCD of M3, M1 is not 1. In that case, we cannot use the earlier method of Chinese remainder theorem. So, how do we solve such a system and when is such a system solvable? Such a system is solvable if and only if Taking the modulus in pairs, first we take the modulus m1 and m2, their GCD, that should divide the difference b2, difference of b2 and b1. When we take m2 and m3 in pair, their GCD should divide the difference of b3, b2. If that happens for all the pairs of moduli, then we say the system is soluble, it has a unique solution and for solving such a system, we use an iterative method, but there is no direct formula. So, we will see one thing. When the moduli are pairwise relatively prime, this method can always be used in place of Chinese remainder. Let's two questions where we will see whether the system is solvable or not and then we will start solving these problems. So, let's look at this example here. x is congruent to mod 2 mod 5 and x is congruent to 1 mod 10. See the GCD of 5 and 10 is 5 and 5 does not divide the difference of 1 and 2. So, such a system is not solvable. Let's take another example. Here we are given a system where first congruence is x is congruent to 3 mod 3, second congruence is x is congruent to 6 mod 6. We see that the GCD of 6 and 3 is 3. And this 3 divides the difference of 6 minus 3. So, the solution exists. So, what we just saw is, if we have a system of congruence to, let's take two congruence here to understand this, x is congruent to a mod m and x is congruent to b mod n. If we take such a system, when GCD of m and n is not 1, that is they have some common factor other than 1, so we will have a solution if and only if the GCD of M and N that divides the difference B and A. To understand why we divide, let's see. If we solve by substitution, the first congruence will give us X is equal to A plus MT. And when we substitute in the second congruence, we get x is a plus mt, which is congruent to b mod of n. If we bring the a on the other side, we get mt is congruent to b minus a mod of n. As we know, for such a congruence to have a solution, the necessary condition, necessary and sufficient condition is that the GCD of m and n should divide b minus a. So, GCD of M and N should divide B minus A. We write this here. This is what we were talking about 
in our definition. As we saw earlier, the method for solving such congruences is iterative in nature. So we start with any congruence, but it is good to take that congruence to start with which has the largest modulus. This helps us in reducing our calculations. We step by step take those congruences. First we take the congruence with the largest modulus. In the next iteration we take the next uh, largest modulus and that is how we go about. To explain this, let's take an example. Here we have been asked to solve a system x is congruent to 6 mod 5, x is congruent to 1 mod 15. We have a system with two congruences. GCD of 5 and 15 is 3 and we know that GCD divides the difference of 1 and 6 which is 5. So the solution exists. To solve, let's take the congruence with greater modulus that is 15, we'll write x minus 1 upon 15 is equal to some variable u. You can even directly write x is equal to 1 plus 15 u. Now, we call this equation as 1. We will put this value of x in our first congruence. x is congruent to 6 mod 5. We've substituted x. This gives us 15u is congruent to 5 mod 5. What we did was we took the 1 to the other side. Now, we do the same thing. We'll take the 5 on the other side, divide by the modulus and equate it to some variable v. On simplifying, we get an equation 15u minus 5v is 5. You can always divide the whole equation by 5 and simplify that. We get 3u minus v is 1. Let's call this equation 2. This is nothing but a Diophantine equation. When we solve this equation for u, we see that if I take u to be 1, v to be 2, 3 into 1 minus 1 into 2 is equal to 1. So our initial solution is u0 is 1 and v0 is 2. We write the general solution u is this 1 or this u0 is 1 plus 1 upon the GCD times t. Let's take the parameter to be t and v is 2 plus 3t. This 2 plus 3 times t. We only need u value. v is of no use to us. So we substitute u in our equation 1 where it appeared. This gives us x is 16 plus 15t. Now, if here t takes all the values 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2, by giving different values to t, we get infinite solutions. We can check when we take t to be 0, 1 or minus 1, we get the answer as x is 16, 31 or 1 and we can see they all satisfy the system. Let's say we are asked to solve the system x is congruent to 4 mod 8, x is congruent to 6 mod 6. Here again the system is solvable as the GCD of 8 and 6 divides the difference of 6 and 4. Solution exists. We will start with the First congruence, x is congruent to 4 mod 8, 8 being the larger modulus, we get x is 4 plus 8u. Now, substitute x from 1 in the second congruence, we will get 4 plus 8u is congruent to 6 mod of 6 or 8u is congruent to 2 mod of 6. When we write it as an equation, we get 8u minus 6v is equal to 2. If we divide by 2 all over, we get 4u minus 3v is 1. Call this equation 2. Now solving this equation 
infantine equation for u. We can see here if I take u value to be 1, t value to be 1, the equation is satisfied. So u0 becomes 1, v0 becomes 1, and the general solution is 1 plus 3t, v is 1 plus 4t. We only wanted u, so we'll substitute u is equal to 1 plus 3t in 1, and that gives us the answer x is equal to 12 plus 24t for all values of t0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2. We will get infinite solutions. We can again check if we take some particular values of t, 0, 1, minus 1, we get x as 12, 36, minus 12, etc. And they all satisfy our system of congruences. This can also be written as x is equal to 12 plus 24 t can also be written as x is congruent to 12 mod of 24. So all values of x which satisfy this congruence, they are a solution. We'll take another example where we now take three congruences. x is congruent to 4 mod 6, x is congruent to 2 mod 8, and x is congruent to 1 mod 7. Again, we see that pairwise the condition is satisfied or not. So let's start with 6 and 8. The GCD of 6 and 8 is 2, and that divides the difference of 2 and 4. The GCD of 8 and 7 is 1, and that divides the difference of 1 and 2. The GCD of 7 and 6 is 1, and that divides the difference of 1 and 4. So the system is solvable. We'll start with the largest modulus. First, congruence for us is now x is congruent to 2 mod of 8, as 8 is the largest modulus. We'll write x is 2 plus 8u. Call this equation 1. We'll put this value of x in the congruence with the second largest modulus, which is x is congruent to 1 mod 7. So when we substitute x, we get 2 plus 8u is congruent to 1 mod 7. And this gives us 8u is congruent to minus 1 mod 7. If we solve this, we get an equation 8u minus 7v is minus 1. On solving for u, we get 8 into 1 minus 7 into 1 is 1. This we know from observation. But we have a minus 1 on the right hand side, so we have to multiply our these values with minus 1. This will give us 8 into minus 1 minus 7 into minus 1, which is minus 1. We can see the equation is also satisfied. This gives us u0 is minus 1. And u becomes, the general solution is u is minus 1 plus 7w. We take some parameter w. So, if you see v comes out to be minus 1 plus 8w, now we will go to the equation number 1 and substitute the value of u. This gives us x is 2 plus 8 into minus 1 plus 7w. We've put the value of u here and this gives us x is minus 6 plus 56w. Substitute this x from 2 into the third congruence. So one by one, we are involving all the congruences. So far we had used our two congruences. Now we are moving to the third one. Substitute x from 2 in the third congruence. And this gives us 56w is congruent to 10 mod 6. When we solve this, we get 56w minus 6k is equal to 10. We've taken this difference upon 6 to be k, some uh, variable k. If we divide by 2, we get 28w minus 3k is equal to 5. We will solve this for w. So now we are using our Euclidean algorithm and we see that 28 into 1 minus 3 into 9 will give us the GCD of 
the two variables 28 and uh, 3, which gives us 1. But our right-hand side was 5, so we multiplied by 5. This gives us initial solution W0 as 5. W becomes 5 plus 3T, the general solution of this Diophantine equation. W0 is 5 plus 3 times a variable T. We are just writing 3 because we have the GCD as 1. If we substitute this W in T, in the equation 2, we get x is equal to 274 plus 168 t. For different values of t, 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2, we get the infinite solutions. Now, one more method we would like to do here, that is solve the following system of congruences where the GCD is again of moduli taken pairwise is may not be necessarily 1. So here we are going to use an alternative method. Let's see. We'll reduce the system to our system of congruences where Chinese remainder theorem can be applied. So let's see. Such a system we can see has a solution. GCD of 10 and 15 is 5. That divides the difference of 10 and 5. GCD of 15 and 9, if we take this pair, that divides 7 and 10. If we take GCD of 9 and 10, that is 1, and that divides the difference of 7 and 5. System is solvable. Now, what we do here is, we write our each congruence as a system of congruence. So we have reduced x is congruent to 5 mod of 10. Then we write as 2 into 5 and write it as a system x is congruent to 5 mod 2 and x is congruent to 5 mod 5. So once we take this 2 then as a modulus, then the 5. Same thing we do for x is congruent to 10 mod of 15 is written as 3 into 5. Split it up into two congruence, we get x is congruent to 10 mod of 3 and x is congruent to 10 mod of 5. The third congruence has 9 as the modulus. So we'll just write it as x is congruent to 7 mod of 3 square. No, 3 square. Now what we have to see? The modulus. The prime modulus, we've reduced them to prime modulus. We'll check each modulus. We see that there is only one congruence which has the modulus 2. So we will keep it aside. Then we have two congruence. Let me go back. Here we have two congruence. One which has modulus 5 here. X is congruent to 5 mod 5. Other congruence X is congruent to 10 mod 5. Both of them you see have a modulus 5. But they are same congruence. Because if I replace 5 by its residue, mod 5, it will be 0. Here also if I replace 10 by its residue, mod 5, it will be 0. So, we will just take any one of them. And if we see in these two congruence, the base modulus is 3. Here we have 3. In the other one, we have 3 squared. So, we will take the congruence which has higher power. So, out of the three, uh, two of them, this has a higher power. So, we take that. Now, so we have now three congruence. The first congruence is x is congruent to 1 mod 2. Second congruence is x is congruent to 0 mod 5, which we wrote because they both were same. So, we just took one of them. And from these two, we took a congruence which had higher moduli. Power of the base was higher. So the third one is x is congruent to 7 mod 9. Instead of 3 square, we wrote 9. If we use the Chinese remainder theorem, we'll get the solution x is congruent to 115 mod of 90. Here, I have not taken n2 and n2 bar, the inverse, because our C2 is 0, 
even if we don't calculate them, that term will be zero. So here what we've seen is any system where the modulus were not relatively prime also could be reduced to the method of Chinese remainder theorem. We'll do one more example just to see that instead of CRT, the Chinese remainder theorem, we can use the iterative method also. Let's take this example here. X is congruent to 1 mod 3. X is congruent to 4 mod 5 and X is congruent to 6 mod 7. The three modulus 3, 5 and 7, they are relatively prime. So ideally, we can use the method of Chinese remainder theorem. In short, we've written it as CRT. But we can always use the iterative method also. So here that has been applied instead of uh, CRT. We take X to be congruent to 6 mod 7 because 7 is the largest modulus. We write X is 6 plus 7 T dash. For a change, we've taken the uh, variable to be T dash. 6 plus 7 T dash. And we put it in the next largest the congruence which has the next largest modulus, which is nothing but the second one. So we put 6 plus 7 T dash is E is congruent. Sorry guys. Uh, this is congruent to 4 mod of 5. Now, here or 7 T dash is congruent. Again, that congruent sign is missing. Congruent to minus 2 mod of 5. This gives us T dash is congruent to minus 1 mod 5. And it implies that T dash will be equal to 4. I've replaced minus 1 by its residue mod 5 and written a 4 here. So T dash comes out to be 4 plus 5 T2 dashes. We'll put this in our equation 1. That gives us x is equal to 34 plus 35 t2 dashes. Let's call this equation 2. We'll put this in our first congruence, the one which was left. These two congruence were already taken care of. Now we move on to this. So 34 plus 35 t2 dashes is congruent to 1 mod 3 or 35 t2 dashes will be congruent to Bring the 34 on the other side, minus 33 mod of 3. This gives us 2 T2 dashes as congruent to minus 33 mod 3. So let's solve this. 33 can be replaced by its residue mod 3. We know that it will be 0. So T2 dashes is congruent to 0 mod 3. Or T2 is equal to 3 times some variable T. If we put this in our equation 2 in place of t2 dashes, we get x is equal to 34 plus 35 into 3t, which gives us the solution. Go on giving different values to t and we'll get the infinite solutions which will satisfy the system. Thank you guys for watching.